Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to today's conversation panel, Cultural Crossroad. My name is Angel, I'm the director for Our Basel Hong Kong. On behalf of Our Basel, I would like to thank the speakers for participating in today's panel today and thank you for sharing your time and your insight with us here, with all of you. Thank you very much for coming. This panel is supported by Hong Kong Tourism Board, our global partner for Our Basel. A partnership with our host cities allows us to expand our platform to accommodate multiple perspectives with a common sharing understanding of art and culture. Allows us to further support the regions and making our world more connected. So now, please allow me to pass the stage to the Artistic Director and Chief Curator of M Plus, Dorian Chung. Thank you so much, Angel, and thank you, Art Basel, um, Paris, Hong Kong, Miami, Basel. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Hong Kong Tourism Board, for sponsoring uh, this particular conversation that kicks off the whole two day of very interesting conversations. So this is one conversation that I myself have been really looking forward to, to speak with two very esteemed colleagues, Stephanie Rosenthal and Paul Fresh. I asked them to introdu introduce themselves um, in the first part of our conversation where we uh, would take just a couple of minutes each talking about our respective institution because we don't want to assume that you have already visited two out of the three museums that are already in existence, or the third museum that is currently under rapid construction. Um, so I'll start by talking about M Plus, where I have been as chief curator for the last 11 years. Just to give a little bit of a context also personally um, of where we are coming from. So before I moved to Hong Kong 11 years ago, that I was almost entirely trained um, in the United States. So it was a, quite a shift that I made. Um, including institutions like MoMA in New York and the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. Um, but it's been a really interesting and productive and rewarding journey of preparing this new museum called M Plus for almost eight years and opened just about three years ago in the middle of the global pandemic. So um, the images, by the way, that you are seeing are compilation of about dozen slides each from each of us and it will be on loop so don't worry they will come back again um, so to speak about M plus it's a, a museum of 20th and 21st century visual culture and what we mean by visual culture is it, it com encompasses three very large disciplinary pillars of design and architecture moving image and visual art it is a museum with a global perspectives, uh, but rooted in Hong Kong, a very international and cosmopolitan city um, in its modern history, shaped very much by trades and exchanges. So as I said, when we opened in November 2021, in the middle of the global pandemic, when Hong Kong, the city, was almost entirely closed to the outside world, we opened uh, with the permanent collection that we had been building up to that point, more than 1,500 works by 700 artists and makers to um, very enthusiastic audiences who were 100% from Hong Kong. So we prepared to build a global museum to open to uh, a very, very local audience who were very hungry and thirst, had such thirst for a different kind of experiences from the pandemic induced is isolation. Um, and then since the city opened up, uh, then the we have now welcomed uh, in the the last two, well, almost three years, um, average about 2.5 million. Actually, last calendar year, we welcomed 2.8 million visitors, um, ranking us number 15 uh, most visited art museum in the world, according to the art newspaper um, annual data. So maybe I'll just stop there for the time being uh, with my very short introduction to 
M plus, and I will hand over to Paul to speak about the Sancho Pompidou project uh, with the West Bund Museum in Shanghai. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dorian, for this introduction. Thank you, uh, uh, Angèle, also. Thanks for the invitation. Very happy to, to be here. Um, and to uh, first maybe start by introducing myself. So uh, Paul Fresh. so I'm uh, the managing director of what we call the Centre Pompidou Westbound Museum Project, uh, which is a cooperation that was launched in 2019 between Centre Pompidou and uh, this uh, local public museum in Shanghai that we call Si An Mei Shuguan Westbound Museum. Uh, the first part of my career for 10 years, I was based in Paris pretty much connected to China already, uh, working uh, mostly as a gallerist and a curator. And then in 2014, um, I settled in Shanghai for the first time for uh, five years to work as a cultural attaché for the French consulate there. And that's how uh, I got more involved in Pompidou's project uh, that was just uh, starting actually the conversation uh, with the local partners. Uh, and when I uh, went back to Paris in 2020, I entered uh, Centre Pompidou. And uh, I've been uh, back, uh, posted in Shanghai again uh, for uh, three years now. So that's my uh, second, uh, let's say, tenure in, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, now to talk a little bit about um, this uh, object that is very, very interesting. It's quite, uh, quite innovative uh, in, its, um, in, in its conception. Um, many people um, call uh, our project Centre Pompidou Shanghai, which it is not actually. The idea has never been uh, to open a subsidiary venue of Pompidou uh, in Shanghai. It has always been um, to work very closely on an integrated partnership with a local uh, structure and to engage a, a dialogue. Uh, that is based on reciprocity, um, and that um, for Centre Pompidou is the, I would say, the, the outcome of a long-term interest for, for China. Um, you know, there has been this uh, important uh, exhibition um, in uh, 1989 uh, in, in Centre Pompidou, Magicians of the Earth. Uh, then there was the uh, Alors la Chine exhibition in 2003. And so it's, it's really... Uh, a long-term uh, relationship and, and uh, commitment uh, to China. Um, and we found actually uh, around 2014 a partner that seemed very suitable for us, uh, which is a, a public uh, land developer um, that um, works uh, under the administration of uh, the Suhui district. Uh, it's called the, the Westbound Group, and they already had a very interesting record uh, in building uh, this uh, cultural uh, district, let's say, that they call the Westbound Cultural Corridor. Uh, they started by opening uh, some uh, um, private uh, institutions, private museums, like the, the Long Museum or the Youth Museum. And then uh, the, the step further was uh, the inauguration of the Westbound Museum, which is um, like the, the, the sister museum of, of Centre Pompidou there. And I would say, uh, maybe to finish and describe the partnership in its content quite quickly, uh, it's about uh, programming, uh, so uh, pretty much based on the collections uh, of Centre Pompidou from France, but showing them in Shanghai and reinterpreting them uh, according you know, to all the conversations that we have with our peers there. Uh, there's also a um, professional training program and also a very interesting um, research uh, scheme uh, on um, local contemporary creation, uh, the outcome of, of, of which is now the, the exhibition that just opened last week in Centre Pompidou, and that is called China, a new generation of artists sort of wraps up three years of research uh, in Shanghai. Uh, maybe that's enough for first introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Dorian, and thank you very much for having us. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here on stage with Dorian and also Paul. Uh, 
M Plus has been a, a, a big sharing partner in, in partner in spirit and uh, has helped a lot already in just guiding us. So I think it's great to to be here on stage together, obviously also with Sohanya here and and to see uh, you know many many things. And I'm going to quiz you later about a few things where we're on the stage can discuss. Uh, I'm Stephanie Rosenthal. I'm the director of the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi project. Um, I moved to Abu Dhabi two years ago. Uh, and was before at the Gropius Bau in Berlin and before that at the Hayward Gallery in London. I also want to mention um, my little time in Australia because it's really been very informative for me and I've learned a lot when I did the uh, biennial, the Sydney biennial, and was very much introduced into First Nation thinking and perspectives. And while we're building the team in Abu Dhabi now, um, we'll also have an adjunct curator, Brooke Andrew, who advises us on that. And I'll talk a bit more about this, how I feel this really feeds into this idea of of a museum as an organism, kinship, and building a sense of belonging very much informed by that. But maybe to talk, because I think as we're not existing, I mean, we exist, but we're not able to be visited yet, maybe to say a little bit about the history of the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi. It's a project which has started already in 2008. So the collection is built now for nearly um, 20 years. We'll have over 1,000 works in the collection by over 400 artists. And when I started two years ago, it was just like, as you can imagine, the joy of the first months to learn about the, the gems in this collection and also to learn how much the collection is rooted in West Asia, North Africa, and South Asia. Obviously obviously, as being a, a very much guided by uh, the Guggenheim also in New York, will have a large holding also of uh, Western uh, artists and the Western canon. But what was always interesting for this project, and one of the reasons I wanted to join us, was really to say what are these different perspectives we can bring with an institution who's located in, the, in that place. And to so really think together as a collaboration with the Department of Culture and Tourism in Abu Dhabi, what are different, what do we want to add to the canon, you know, curators like me know, and how can we make that a kind of uh, place to also renegotiate and relearn? So it's, it's very important to say that the project has, I always say, like two legs, and, and the one very important leg for us is the, the, the team from the Department of Culture and Tourism in Abu Dhabi. So we are basically uh, represented by myself and the Salomon Er Guggenheim Foundation, just one partner, and the other partner is uh, Abu Dhabi itself, and so we're building also the collection together, and as you can imagine, I mean, building now a really fantastic team, and our chief curator, Mustafa Shabir Hussein, just joined us in January from Singapore, so we're building a very diverse team from our side. I have now 20 members, and we have 15 different, representing 15 different cultures, so it's, a, it's in itself a, a, a project to kind of create that community between us, and, and also to say that obviously the um, the Emirati side and the team is is very much contributing. So when I sit here, there's always like a, I always feel a, a half is missing. Um, you've seen the the, the uh, pictures here. The museum is built and conceived by Frank Gehry, similar to the museum in Bilbao. You see, it's kind of nearly the same time. So it's it's a kind of um, architecture which in whites we always say dancing with the building it's a lot of curved walls has a lot of different heights so it's 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 very inspiring to engage with this museum um, and 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 what we are doing now since the last two years is continuing to build the collection adding to the things we feel are really important for the first collection display, but also very much thinking, and I think this is where I learn a lot also from M Plus, to really think how can we become a place for community and the sense of belonging as a new and the first really large scale institution for contemporary art. The collection starts from 1960 and really goes to basically the most recent time. How can we create this community? And so what we're doing is very much commissioning artists who work participatory with the community to um, really create this community before the museum opens and maybe we'll have uh, time to 
talk a bit more about that, but that is, I think, also something I'd like to hear a bit more about how, uh, how you know, the, your experience doing this. Um, just taking the cue from both Paul and Stephanie, I think I would just fill in a little bit to explain, because both of you talked about the whole partnership aspect being very, very important um, in establishing these institutions. And then that's the part that I haven't talked about um, in terms of M+, which is part of West Kowloon Cultural District Authority, a public body established by the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government, but we're independent public body. Um, what we are creating is also um, a, a cultural district, which is another topic that we can perhaps talk about that includes not just M+, but another museum, Hong Kong Palace Museum, but um, already several performing arts venues, one for Cantonese opera, one black box theater for contemporary uh, dance and performances, and right next to M+, we're also building a three theater complex, mainly dedicated to contemporary dances as well. So I think one thing perhaps we are sharing in these three cities between Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Abu Dhabi is that the, we are part of a more complex ecology of cultural districts that are emerging. Um, but to your uh, point and topic, Stephanie, about how do you build a community? And then what is the kind of impact that a new institution can play as an anchoring role? Um, I mean, I would love to certainly hear from both of you. You already started talking about how you bring artists um, actually working with the community. And that resonates very much with what we did also. Um, during the time that, that um, people locally, regionally, and internationally, the public were waiting for us to open <laughs> for a long time. And that what we did is to organize a lot of exhibitions around Hong Kong. First, we didn't have any spaces, so we had to find um, open spaces, which are very, very hard to come by in Hong Kong. Then we had a little exhibition hall uh, right next to the museum construction site. And before the opening of 2021 of the museum building, we had more than 20 exhibitions. So that was a certainly one way of not only training ourselves, um, we uh, always talked about building our curatorial muscles, but also revealing one facet after another of what this complex museum is going to show and represent. Another good example that I can take is, I don't have an image here, but we have something called M plus Rover, which was a container that was turned into an artist studio as well as art workshop that literally went to many different secondary schools and primary schools around Hong Kong, because of course, that's the age um, that's the group that will be our future audiences and that are now also, of course, our current audiences. I think the maybe third example that I would take of in terms of activating and enriching our community is uh, the very important work that we did in curating and co-organizing with the Art Development Council in Hong Kong of bringing Hong Kong artists to Venice Biennale, which we did six times starting in 20. 13 until currently right now with Trevor Young, who also made the contribution to the Hong Kong Cafe in the Grand Palais. Yeah, so I think what we realized from very early on is that we don't have to wait until the museum building opens, that we really need to be the catalyst in our city, in our community, in the ecology. So I would love to also hear the kind of catalytic work that you have done in your respective cities. Sure. So I think for the case of the, the Centre Pompidou and Westbound Museum project, it's a, li a little bit different because the Westbound uh, Cultural Corridor already, you know, was uh, in, in the making and was already quite um, already very active. So we, 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 we came as, a, as a, um, a one more stage, you know, in, in this in this development. So I mentioned these uh, private museums that were already open. There's also uh, an art fair. Then there's a bunch of galleries. Uh, that arrived just opposite uh, to the um, to, to the museum. Uh, just maybe one little uh, word about uh, the, the museum itself, the building, because I, I didn't um, uh, mention that. So it's it's a wonderful building by David Chipperfield Architects, uh, which is um, of let's say reasonable scale. It's not super big. It's not small either. I think for Shanghai, it's really really nice and. Uh, 
um, it's um, a real pleasure, you know, uh, in terms of uh, curating and uh, having the exhibition. I think the, the public also likes it very much. Uh, so that's one uh, important uh, point. You can see it, uh, of course, in the in, in, in the images that are running. Um, so I, I truly believe that in terms of uh, um, building a community together, so it's really a common work um, with our you know peer institutions and, and other you know driving forces uh, around us in, in the neighborhood. And what we have done uh, with uh, with Pompidou, actually. Uh, I think that we, since we have provided uh, the Westbound Museum with the, um, you know, the, the, the strength of the, the modern and contemporary collection of Centre Pompidou, uh, it sort of, uh, from the scratch, became the only place uh, in China where you can see a very important and nice selection um, of modern uh, and, and contemporary art coming from a Western perspective on, on, on the long-term basis. Uh, and so I think this attracted, you know, the, the, the public's attention uh, right away. And then there was something very important for us not to, to, to be sort of, uh, you know, off the ground, no? So we, we, we wanted to, to, to be much more rooted. And I think that the, the contemporary um, programs that, that we did uh, with Chinese artists were very, very uh, important in that and, and will continue to be. Uh, so. Um, the, the museum has, uh, let's say, five different uh, gallery spaces. Two are dedicated uh, to what we call semi-permanent collection uh, display, which um, uh, turn every uh, one year and a half. Uh, and that's really where we showcase uh, Pompidou's modern and uh, contemporary continuum um, with one quite uh, open-ended theme. Like we started with time, then we moved to objects, and now the third one uh, is about portraits. Then we have one space for temporary exhibitions. And for the temporary exhibitions, as uh, whenever we can, uh, we try um, not just to bring them from Paris and leave them li li like this, but we, we try to, to, to think them um, from a Chinese perspective. You can see in the images running um, one retros uh, retrospective of Kandinsky. Uh, that was the first one to happen uh, in mainland China in 2021. And on this occasion, um, the, the curator Angela Lampe uh, decided to introduce Kandinsky uh, as um, someone who had very uh, strong ties to Eastern Asia. Um, and thanks to uh, research in the Kandinsky archive in Pompidou, we found a lot about his interest uh, for Chinese bronzeware, Chinese painting. Uh, we also own his Asian art collection. And so these objects were displayed um, with uh, his own works. And um, also we uh, asked for uh, uh, loans of uh, bronzewares from uh, Zhou and Shang Dynasty, wonderful pieces that were lent to us by the Shanghai Museum. And that really, okay, so here you, you, you can see the images of the Kandinsky exhibition. And here you have the, the paintings and the bronzeware. And this was really groundbreaking. And I think it was a very interesting way to attract uh, the audience uh, in, in, in Shanghai and, and, and um, a broader audience. Um, and to take them by the hand and, and, and to sort of, um, in a very um, clear and, and simple way, um, show them that all that is connected already. And it, it's only up to us to make it more visible, the, these connections. Um, there's another example in the, in the Diaporama. It's a, a show on surrealism uh, that we did last year curated by Didier Otinger, who's a curator who now is doing the surrealism uh, exhibition that I, I invite you to see this week. Um, and once again, uh, the, the, the angle of the show was um, surrealism and uh, its uh, inspirations from Eastern Asia. So it was the, the surrealism of the poets, of the writers, and um, we showed some very interesting ties um, with Chinese calligraphy, with Chinese painting, and once again worked with uh, Chinese public institutions that made a few loans to us. And we had uh, wonderful uh, paintings by uh, Miro, let's say, uh, and uh, amazing Chinese paintings uh, by Bata Shenzhen or Liang Kai. So really a dialogue between, between time 
and, and space that, that was very, very rewarding. Mm. Um, so this, this is uh, maybe the idea of uh, building this community through uh, the, the, the programming, but of course, uh, one of the very important aspects is also all the mediation and the public programs. And for that, I think that the, the, the Westbound Museum has a very strong and very uh, uh, skillful team. And they, they really come up with uh, tons of ideas. For, for example, for the, the, the semi-permanent uh, display we have now on portraits, um, we have uh, um, you know, some little stands uh, in the auditorium of the museum. Uh, where the audience uh, can do their own uh, portraits, and all the portraits are now shown uh, in the in the atrium of the uh, of the museum. There are thousands of you know small self portraits, and then you know with the social media, this makes a lot of uh, of buzz and uh, brings a lot of of public to us. Um, maybe about about the the audience uh, uh, of the of the museum so we are very far from uh, the impressive figures that uh, Dorian just mentioned uh, in 5 years we have achieved a little bit more than 2 million uh, of, of visitors but which we believe is is pretty honorable uh, um, for us and, and according to to our goals and to the to the context in shanghai um, and uh, also what is um, very uh, in, in interesting is that uh, the, the, the project uh, opened just a few months before COVID. And so has so far um, not really had any normal you know, year. It's, it was maybe since 2023 when China reopens the borders, we start to have sort of normality. So we're still sort of yeah, finding our way. My cue here. Now you see. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, very perfect. So maybe just uh, thank you very much for sharing. I think it's it's uh, a lot. I mean, a lot of I think parallels and obviously very different as uh, as as we know. And I think what I think we all do and what you have described to be also aware that obviously the collections and the collections displays is a very important anchor and we have 28 uh, collection galleries and nine of these will be dedicated to single artist galleries and then we have special exhibitions in four galleries but I, I think what I want to say is and I think what you both are describing is that in our times obviously a museum is is not just the collection but it's really the space in between and what, how we communicate and how the museum is a place for exchange and conversations and how we can um, invite our visitors to come and spend time there. And I think in, in, in M plus, this is, I mean, oh, I'm always very amazed, you know, how many places you have where people can gather and talk and, and, and kind of exchange. And that's very much something which uh, we feel is also in the center of what what we want to and need to build and uh, certainly the collection display and how we think maybe about popular culture or obstruction with you know curators who have worked on the collection since over a decade that Sasha Kaltawasaman or Sandini Podar is is one way of I think opening up these conversations but I think a, a big part is also and that's you might wonder why you see all these mangroves the whole time on this, on the on this screen, and it's it's something um, which is you know we're using as an artistic team a lot, also as a inspiration to think about it was Glissant's relational identity and to really uh, be inspired by him when he says, I can change through exchanging with others without losing or diluting my sense of self. So to very much think about where are we actually, where is Abu Dhabi? And when you think that Abu Dhabi has 12% Emirati, um, and you know, if, you, if I would kind of count all the other percentages, it's nearly like equal. So it's, it's in itself a community, which is already, I think, what Glissant is talking about, that we'll become a new community that we can live together, learn from each other, and kind of create a culture together. And obviously a museum is very much, I think, or can be, or I mean, that's the aspiration, a place where this is very much lived. And so when we use the mangroves, we really think about a place which is creating a transition between sea and land, but it can also be a transition between different perspectives, different cultures. And the same with the, the rhizomatic systems of the mangroves, to just think that there isn't just one route, there are many routes, and that 
a, a place like Abu Dhabi is really reflecting that. And the Emirati culture is something, I mean, I've worked over, over many years in the different institutions, starting with the Hayward around this question of hospitality and welcoming, and how can we be able as an institution to welcome different people, and obviously, in the UK or in, in, in Germany, it was mainly Germans, mainly uh, English people, and in the US mainly. But there it's really that you think, oh yeah, but it can't be just one language. We'll have to, and the same of course, what you have in my plus, what you will have, that we have to represent nearly five languages, the Arabic, English, Urdu, Hindi, you know, there's so many uh, languages where we know a larger part of the community will speak that. And so the, the mangroves and this idea also of, the mangroves are also a place of resistance, a place of coming together, a place where many different uh, species live together. So it's very much this this idea of us to think how can that or how is that an inspiration for us to work also and invite artists. So what we do is inviting artists to do commissions in the very much the kind of so the the twenty eight galleries have 11,000 square uh, meters of exhibition space, so that's indoor. And then extra, ex outside, which is kind of an in-between, because you've seen it on the images, it's like a cones, it's covered cones, it's another 22 square meters. So it's, it's large spaces which interact very much with just the climate, right? The, 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 the feeling of desert, the sand, the sea, we're right at the sea. So to invite artists to really think through what is actually the this place, like, you know, to work with the community, to learn from uh, the archives, the storytellers from the region, and build with us uh, that network very much through exchanging what, what, what we call the stories, so the, the stories of each other, and so we learn through the artist, and I think that's very much probably what you have done what you do, like with, we all know that artists doing amazing, having amazing ways of doing research and building friendships and how these friendships could become roots for our institution. I think very much what I think you probably have learned in Hong Kong and also in Shanghai that we don't can't we can't expect that that you're going to see that right away in the next year. It might take ten years. It might take fifteen years. But just taking the time. And yesterday, someone said so nice. He said, a, a "Quality is not afraid of long time periods or something." So like it's it, this is what museums are, right? We're building these seats, which we have to also be aware that maybe the tree you can only see in ten years. But that doesn't matter for institutions. I think who who want to really be a place where people come together, it just sometimes has to also just grow slowly. I think that's what, you know, in culture, and I think when we, probably one of your next questions will also go a bit into this question of what has changed for cultural institutions in the, since the pandemic, and I think there is this also about time, right, and, and, and taking, taking the time. So before going to that, there have been several mentions now of a visitorship and demographics for each of our um, museum or what you were anticipating. So what I'm now wondering about is the kind of transformative impact that we have, not just on the community, but the city's economy and identity as a whole. Um, Hong Kong, for instance, uh, was before the pandemic one of the most visited cities in the world. Um, and then it had a very high uh, level of tourism, quant number of tour tourists coming through, but perhaps what they were mostly attracted to were food and shopping, as well as the beautiful sceneries that you can get. I think we can confidently say that after the pandemic, uh, with institutions that opened up like us and Hong Kong Palace Museum, that they we're really helping to shift that attraction more towards the cultural arena. And of course, that's also part of the general change uh, towards cultural tourism that has happened in the global tourism in general. So I'm wondering in your cities in Shanghai and Abu Dhabi, what you are thinking um, in terms of what you and your museum and other institutions um, and cultural organizations have done to change um, the, the previously existing identity and you know, attractions. 
That's that's a very interesting question. Uh, I think we have to to think it uh, in a very collective way because uh, when I think of the recent um, development of uh, new institutions in Shanghai, I'm more looking um, over the past ten years. So um, um, institutions like the Rockbond Museum, which has been I think very influential um, in putting uh, uh, international uh, contemporary artists on the map uh, in, in in Shanghai. Um, then I think that uh, the power station of art also, which is the host institution of Shanghai Biennale, uh, plays also a very important role um, since uh, its uh, launch in 2012, I think. Um, I think we, we've added an, another layer to that, uh, mostly, once again, uh, with the modern collection, mostly, of, of, of Centre Pompidou. Uh, and then um, I think we, we, we brought some, some influence on the, on the whole uh, museum scene in the way that uh, we see more and more uh, peer institutions that also um, showcase, um, put more emphasis on, on, on modern art. Um, I'm thinking of uh, UCCA, for instance, that opened in Shanghai approximately at the same time as M Plus opened in, in uh, maybe just a few months before, no, in, uh, before you opened. Uh, and also one important um, new institution in Shanghai, uh, which has also um, some uh, um, uh, common uh, um, characteristics as, as ours, and which is the Pudong Art Museum. Uh, the Pudong Art Museum, they're also pretty much connected to um, important international institutions, and they have a, a quite um, strong partnership with Tate. Uh, I think uh, this might not be uh, like a, a direct consequence of um, Pompidou uh, teaming up with, with the West Bond, but I think we're all part of this. And uh, um, obviously together, I think we, we've really changed, um, I think, the, 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 the museum scene in Shanghai over the past 10 years. Um, in terms of uh, uh, time span of our um, involvement in China, first we had signed for five years which was very, very short uh, and was uh, not enabling us, uh, you know, to have, uh, I think, um, very, um, like, consistent, uh, um, let's say, uh, outcome. Uh, but um, we're happy that uh, last year uh, we signed for another five years. So now we can project ourselves uh, for one decade in China, which I think is, is already quite consistent. But uh, I still feel that we are some kind of host, you know, a guest, a guest, because um, the, the building, of course, is the museum, the Westbound Museum's building. It's not ours. Um, and uh, I think over this uh, 10 years period, we'll, we'll try as much as we can, you know, to uh, um, have, uh, you know, interesting interactions, um, and try to, to consolidate this uh, institutional scene in Shanghai. And then we, we will see if, if, we, if we continue or not. This is maybe too, too early to, to say. Um, but um, yeah, I think the, the most important thing uh, is to, to see it in a, in a reciprocal perspective. To me, that's, that's really the, the, the key of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, uh, I think I want to pick up from what you say that uh, probably both of us, you know, as institutions, we feel we're guests or we're kind of, and, and I think as an institution, the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi is obviously not a guest because we are uh, uh, the institution for Abu Dhabi and the collection is owned by Abu Dhabi, but as uh, the Guggenheim, Salomon Air Guggenheim Foundation, I always feel that uh, I'm, I'm, I feel very humbled by the fact that we are, you know, invited to contribute to build this institution and to go into conversation and being very aware of that. Of course, we can only bring one perspective, especially myself. I'm invited to bring the, the perspective from the international side, the outside, but very clearly working together. And I think that's a, a very important part in thinking of how can we welcome, and especially in a country like the Emirates, where hospitality is one of the most lived, uh, 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 I think, rituals, to see how can that institution do that too, but always being aware that um, we do that in conversation with with the place the institution is. And I, I think what 
uh, kind of a bit more answering your question of also what is the, the context or what is also maybe the idea of change through culture, right? I think, and through museums. I mean, the, um, the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi is part, is not only part of the Guggenheim constellations, but also part of the Sadiat Cultural District which is a huge district um, with more than five museums, Natural History Museum, National Museum, and some of you might have been at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which opened a bit over five years ago. And I was able, and just moving there two years ago, to see, uh, and I think probably similar to your experience, how suddenly you know a place which is maybe at the beginning, a place where the, some tourists are coming, how it suddenly becomes a very lively place with, you know, you feel it's, it's, it, this is the reason to come and not to go into the shopping mall, but go to the Louvre Abu Dhabi, but also how it's possible to be at the same time a place for the local community in a completely new built environment. And I, I think that's something which, you know, especially being in Paris, it's a very different feeling in a place like uh, Abu Dhabi, that a lot of things are happening at the same time. And the commitment to support and invest into culture and believe that culture is what, you know, will be part of building, uh, continue to build the society there is, is a very reassuring, uh, I think, aspect for someone like, uh, you know, us to, to, to work there and to really say that that cultural district will make a big difference for how, um, you know, the, the community will grow up there. And for me, if people ask me, what is the one thing you would really, what would be a success? And just to think about that, you know, in 20 years or you meet someone who says, oh, when I was five, you know, for the first time I went into a museum of contemporary art. And since then I got very interested in, you don't have to fly somewhere far to do that. And I think this is, this is in, in, in the place where we are, the big difference that there is no contemporary art museum. And of course we have, as, as probably many of you know, this amazing history in Sharjah with the Biennale and, and a very kind of grassroots discourse with many artists having been there and worked there. And, and uh, the Sharjah Foundation has done the most amazing work to build the discourse. Um, but the, to have a museum like the Guggenheim in, in, in that size to represent the local artists, but also the artists of the region of, uh, you know, the wider West Asia and South Asia and just you know, traveling to Sri Lanka or to, you know, uh, Lahore or to India. It's, 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 it's wonderful to see all these friends who say, we can't wait, we come a lot to the Emirates, but to have this museum and see our artists represented there will be like uh, the biggest joy. So it's, it, it, it's, and so when you see also the map here for us, it's really also building this community. And again, when we use the mangroves as nearly like the other side, right? We'll have New York, we have Venice, we have Bilbao, but then there are all these relations you know, which are a focus for for us and also for the Department of Culture and Tourism to say we want to collaborate with you know the institutions and the biennials who are represented by you know what we call our mangrove map at the moment, and hopefully with you guys. So three museums share a lot of similarities. I hope that that's already clear to the audience. Is certainly amongst us. But perhaps the difference between M plus and the, the two museums is that that we are purpose built building as well as an institution, um, and we're the first. You know, I don't know if we'll have a branch in the future later, but we're still too young. But you're in different models, of course. Um, I have relationships with an institution that is more than 45 years old, more than 80 years old. Um, and since we're sitting here in Paris, one of the traditional metropolitan centers in the West, then I think it really begs the question of what are the projects in Shanghai, Pompidou project in Shanghai, and the, one of the Guggenheim museums in Abu Dhabi, what kinds of impact do they have back to your old, older predecessors or motherships or whatever you might call them? Like what kind of influence or change or impact are you having from where you are to Paris and New York? Mm, I think there are some very interesting things happening actually when, when you start uh, this conversation and this relationship uh, with the partner institution in another part of, of the world. And for, for our case, uh, so it's it's Shanghai, and uh, as I said, there's this very long-term interest from Centre Pompidou uh, for for China, 
and we, we can even um, uh, go further in time, earlier in time than uh, the opening of Pompidou itself, which was in 1977. But before that, actually, our National Museum of Modern Art uh, already started to come to to to, to collect uh, modern Chinese art as early as 1933, uh, and so that's that's the the, the basis of the the, the Chinese uh, collection of, of Pompidou. Uh, which entered our collections um, like 90 years ago, and so um, we are really uh, continuing this this story. And this is, I think, that's one of the most rewarding parts, uh, actually, of of this uh, of this venture. Um, so, for for one very simple example, uh, I mentioned the exhibition that uh, opened uh, last week uh, in in Pompidou in Paris which I'm privileged to be one of the curators. Uh, so we showcase uh, the works of 21 uh, artists from China. Um, most of them are based in China. Some of them are based uh, in other countries, but still very actively taking part in the, in the scene there. And they're all from the, the same generation, born in the 1980s. So they're the, the kids of uh, the opening up and reforms era of, of China. Um, so, um, we are now showing 50 of their works uh, and about 20 of them uh, will enter the collection uh, through the, the, the generosity of Chanel. Um, and so this is, um, for us, the, the, the way to continue this, this story, you know. Um, wh wh what I'd like to, to mention also is that um, this first acquisition in 1933 uh, was made during um, one exhibition that I think was the first, I'm, I'm even sure, it was the first one in Paris, actually, to display uh, contemporary Chinese creation of that time. So it was um, the group of artists uh, who had studied uh, in Beaux-Arts de Paris, for, for most of them, and they were invited to show their works in the, what was the Musée des Écoles Étrangères in Jeux de Paume, just a few hundred meters from here. Um, and uh, this exhibition was co-curated um, by a French curator of this National Museum and by a Chinese artist, Xu Bei Hong, who became then a very uh, influential, uh, not only artist, but also uh, a director of uh, a cafe in, in, in Beijing. Uh, and at that time, um, so the, the French state uh, uh, collected these these paintings, and they are now in in, in our collection. And I, I like to, th to to see this exhibition. You can see yeah, the, the the picture just before was one installation shots uh, in in Paris. Uh, I like to see this also, um, yes, as as just a new chapter in a very long story. And uh, I think this chapter would have been different for sure. And I'm not even sure it would have existed in this like in, at this stage, now at this time, if we didn't uh, have set this partnership in, in Shanghai that really triggered uh, the, this, uh, the, this project. Yeah. Uh, then maybe another very interesting aspect uh, is the, the reinterpretation and the, the new ways of considering our own collections that we can uh, learn uh, from uh, working um, in China and, and showing them in China. Uh, because I think that uh, through the, the discussions uh, that we have with our peers um, come a lot of new new ideas and they uh, I'm sure they will you know uh, inform different uh, shows and, uh, and uh, uh, researches that are conducted in Paris. Um, and yeah this, this is really one of the most beautiful outcomes of, of the partnership. And maybe in our case to say, I mean, also with Married Westerman joining now as a president, she her vision is really very much to even enforce the impact of the constellations on each other. But what the Guggenheim has always done is to really say that every institution is their own, you know, has their own character. And I mean, I think it shows by hiring someone like me. I'm not American. I've never worked for the Guggenheim. So it's not that you know, there is this feeling of we'll need to put someone there who 
represents exactly what we're doing in New York, but much more saying, how can we support each other? And obviously, by building this collection over nearly 20 years, there is the expertise of the curators in New York, and through many generations has helped to build this, this outstanding collection. And in many other areas, of course, you know, when you think of conservation, things where, you know, we have learned and get the advice from, uh, uh, from New York. But now we are also building our own team. And I think what we see in the region, you know, that a lot of people will be maybe trained by us and go somewhere else. And the same from, you know, the expertise is, which is trained in M plus will kind of travel and help the regions to have experts. So I think that's part of our role. You know, this is how we also benefit of the tremendously successful work and plus has done, no? Because we'll we're gonna there be these people who can kind of move from place to place and, and move in different directions. So I think that's very that's very important for us. And the other thing which which we're building is just a platform for also the the, the curatorial team members, but beyond that for all the constellations to really say how can we actually benefit from our research like how can what we are building and the resources we have in Abu Dhabi to do you know to give grants to encourage PhDs how will that impact the 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 exhibition making in New York so there's not at all you know that idea of their their like shows from New York constantly traveling to us it's more like that that you know I guys say and say can you do one show a year so so just kind of you know so it's it's not at all this feeling of new york is coming and saying this is how we want to be represented it's really it's it's really a very a clear exchange between us and that will be the same on the sadiat uh, cultural district so it will be just a kind of network of i think different experiences and i think the other thing which is 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 important and you know we will see how that you know if if new york uh, will take something on is also that you know the the building of a new institution gives the opportunity to do things different and so when i talked about this idea of how can we build a museum also internally based on kinship and collaboration then we know that you know certain structures of existing uh, institutions um, with a very strong hierarchy and kind of silos doesn't make it that easy, I think, to um, implement a, a different thinking. While we now there, by building a completely new structure, can start differently and can you know make sure that departments work more closely together and that it's not just we're not saying the curators and the curatorial have always the say. We know you know that. Uh, that, that the conservation department can be as creative and you know influential in building an exhibition as it's the exhibition management, as it's outreach and education. And I think we're all sitting here, and I know, Dorian, you, you especially because we had more conversation, that we really believe that an interesting program is only built if there aren't these hierarchies within the institutions. And it's easier to do that, and I mean, I had painful experiences in other institutions because it was existing structures, and to make changes is always very different. And in where I am now, this this place is a place of extreme willingness for transformation and fast transformation, and we can build new structures. So that will, I think, show hopefully that other models are possible. And then, you know, in, in our case, if another constellation, you know, in our family feels, oh, this looks actually good, then, you know, that will help to make a difference there, I think. Thank you for that last point, both Paul and Stephanie. I can see that our time is already up. I feel like our conversation has just started. And then even if you weren't here, I think we'll totally continue. But we do have to vacate the stage. But I hope that it is all clear to you that all three museums are playing a transformative and catalytic role in our respective cities. But then we are also changing the relationships between what used to be called centers and what used to be called peripheries, which is where we are. And then those relationships are changing, vectors have changed. We're looking at one another, not just to Paris and New York and London, um, to learn from each other and creating a new models that, are, that work for each one of us, but also a new form of collaboration. So thank you for that conversation and thank you for your attention, audience. <laughs>